world of outcomes that we don't see. And maybe being put on this path is what it takes for you to get to that path that you want. It's never just, things have to be A, B, C. You don't, you don't know the endless possibilities that can happen. So sometimes we're put on a path, we think, oh my God, everything went wrong. No, things are exactly how they're supposed to be going. It's just your perspective of victimization that can change that. And you have to see that life happens for you, never to you. So if there is a change that did not match, whenever you have planned A, B, and C, know that it's because it is to align you and have that faith that God fit this. That I'm confident wherever I land, I'm gonna land on my feet. I'm a cat, so I land on four feet. I land on my feet standing. And that's not only there because that's what it, where I have to be to get to where I've been praying for. Um, I think my superpower is, no, I don't think, I know, mm. is resilience. Resilience. In order to keep in alignment with your identity and, and be able to go through these different things that life may throw at you, I believe that my ability to just keep getting back up and getting back up and getting back up, you know, if I get knocked down 10 times, I will be up 11. Like, I'm just gonna keep getting back up and I truly believe that everything that has happened in my life did not happen to me, but it happened for me. Mm. And because I believe that, I just continue to walk in the spirit of resilience, that no matter what it is, Lisa, I gotta get back up because I have people to serve and I have a mission and a purpose to fulfill. The real wealth is in the mind and in the heart, my loves. For just a moment, I want to encourage you to think about how powerful your thoughts and your feelings are. If your mind is empowered and your heart is full, then you have the true capacity to take on the entire world. You've realized, and more importantly than that, you've accepted the fact that you are, in fact, a limitless magnetic magnet, a being of light with purpose and a destiny that is fated to be fulfilled and love and grace are yours to give and to receive. However, if your thoughts or heart are drained and wilted, then so too will be your power and ultimately your potential. A wilted mind or heart can still be watered and regenerated though through the power of spoken words, a divinely placed thought or feeling, a belief that breaks through and grows, or a prayer. All of it though comes right back to you and what you are currently believing. You are what you believe. If you believe that you are healthy, then you will be healthy. If you believe that you are abundant, then abundance is yours. If you believe that you are loving, then love is your natural state of being. If you believe that you are forgiving, then your energy changes into a space of grace and compassion and kindness. All of it comes back into the space of what you are choosing to believe. The real wealth is in the mind and in the heart, my loves. For that reason, I want to encourage you to find people mantras, affirmations, words every day that speak life into you and empower your spirit to the point where you feel so strong and so empowered. That is what spirit saw for you from the beginning. You may have forgotten that and you may need the reminder, but once you receive that and your spirit, your soul accepts this truth and reality, it will stick with you forever. Hold anyone that speaks to your mind, empowers your thinking and fills your heart because their value is lasting and effortless. And with that, I want to also encourage you to have boundaries, and a healthy level of respect for this space of growth that is happening within you. And I want you to have the same healthy level of love and respect and boundaries for those that you cross along your path that speak life into you as well. This protects you and them and keeps us all vibrant beings. It protects the gift, it protects the love, it protects the light, which gives us each more space for us to give and receive our gifts to each other. I, I want to know that I made choices rooted in faith, not fear. Mm. And so the fear of, oh, they won't invite me again. There's other shows. The fear of, well, they'll think I'm a bad person. I know I'm a good person. About Because what good is it to have public success and then be a private failure? If you don't you know, do things a certain way that you don't have to settle for that. They, there's plenty of people out there. They want you for who you are, 
for what experience you bring, for the level of talent you bring, for the level of energy you bring. They want you for you. And this is what that comes with. So why do you keep dumbing it down, accepting the first thing that folks throw at you, being excited to be invited just because you got the invitation mm -hmm. um, and not going for more, not going for what you're worth. Wealth, I teach people that wealth is about well-being in every area of your life. And so I break down these pillars, but I do it so that folks can understand that we have to be fulfilled mm -hmm. in different parts of our lives. If one thing goes down, that can't be the end all be all. So if we're actually aware and paying attention to these different areas of our life, and we know that there are ebbs and flows in life and there are seasons where some things are gonna be awesome and other things are gonna take a dip, but overall we're good with us, I think that's the goal, you know? I love for me it therapy. is and in therapy for two years pretty much talking about all the childhood trauma and different things mm -hmm. that I had experienced and that was the first time I learned to forgive people that would never say I'm sorry mm. and I realized that hurt people really do hurt people I was 25 before I could look in the mirror without cringing wow. so I've only been okay with myself really the last 10 years and ironically, that was the same for, that was the same year my business hit seven figures. There was just like a lot of not coincidence, right? Yeah, no coincidence. But now as the mother of a preteen, beautiful brown girl, I feel like I have to keep having that conversation and making sure that she also knows how beautiful she is and that, you know, people just say things, but you have to know who you are. I and think peace is more like happiness. Having peace in your heart. Mm -hmm. Not holding any grudge against anyone. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. And if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Mm -hmm. It's as plain as that. She says that peace comes from knowing God. The Lord is good mm -hmm. and his mercy endureth forever. Those who have sinned a lot love a lot and I love them very much. I've sinned just, we all, we all sin, but I sinned and, uh, and he's forgiven me. And there's forgiveness for everyone. And I just realized that it was all to do with changing your perspective, like seeing, okay, this has happened to me, but how can I grow from it? Like this has happened to me because of a reason. And if I'm not learning the lesson, then it will keep happening to me over and over again until I learn the lesson. Because I don't think the universe or God or anybody is trying to do things to harm you. Mm. It's to, for you to grow deeper and understand yourself better and, and grow in a way that maybe you don't realize at the time. But reflecting back, you'll be able to say, damn, like that's why I became like this. Like this is what made me stronger. And the problem is when we keep thinking into the future, you're never present. Mm. And so I say, be present in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like embrace it and think, okay, if this fails, that's fine. What will I learn from it? Like, mm. what can I gain right, from it? Right. And so I think that's probably the second thing. Just be present in the moment and just think, I've been put into this situation for a reason. There is a reason why I've been given this opportunity. So if I take it, I'm either gonna get something incredible out of it or I may fail and still get something incredible mm. from it because I'm gonna grow. Yeah. And so it's either gonna be a tangible thing which you can, like success that you can hold or it'll be something internally that you're, that you're able to change. But both are incredible. Both are like the best thing mm -hmm. for you. I love it. If looking for content online isn't really your thing and you want some structure as far as the things that you are listening to to consume information that is uplifting, you can always try Audible for their great audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, and their endless amount of other content that they have through Audible Originals. I always love sharing my favorite clips that I listen to. Um, in my audiobooks with my family and friends to inspire them to listen to the audiobooks that I listen to. Here are a few clips of some of my favorite audio snippets that I've listened to this past month. And I really love this feature because it allows you to save some of your favorite parts and share them with your family and friends, or even just listen to them as a reminder to yourself. Currently, I have been trying to restructure and delegate business. So business audiobooks have kind of been my go-to currently. If you guys have not tried Audible for yourself, you can get your first audiobook for free by going to www.audible.com slash fineguru 
or you can text Find Guru to 500 500 and try out some of these audiobooks for yourself and see how it impacts your morning or daily routine. Black Wall Street Tulsa, founded by O.W. Gurley and J.B. Stratford, boasted a community of 600 plus black entrepreneurs who provided the products and services that Tulsan residents needed for nearly 15 years. A woman will add to him, but a great woman will multiply whatever he gives her tenfold because that's what great women do. We take a seed and we manifest a harvest. The only number that a great woman can't multiply is zero. But then for ourselves, a lot of times we will accept the first offer put on the table. Sometimes we are so quick to be, or, or so excited to be invited to the table mm. that we don't ask any questions. And we're like, oh, okay, well, this sounds good. This looks good. And a man, let's keep it real, who is yeah. mediocre at best, is super excited to go and negotiate, you know, two and three times, but you'll have a woman who can check off every box, every qualification. She's done everything mm -hmm. under the sun. She'll get a low ball offer and to not make waves or not be considered, not be considered all of this stuff. She won't negotiate mm -hmm. and remind yourself of who you are before you go back to that negotiation table or before you reply to that email, and not just in a corporate setting, but even as entrepreneurs, I see so many women, you know, I coach women through this, right? They'll say what their price is, and then before the person could like open their mouth, they're like, but I could do more and more and more, or I could bring it down, or I could do two for one, or I could, and they start negotiating themselves down right. to do more work for less money because they forget who they are. And I've been guilty of it. I forgot who I was. I remember when I would get calls to go to all these shows and do stuff, I would be so pumped up, like, oh my gosh. And then they would start asking for all this unreasonable stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm okay, well now it's getting, and I'm like, wait a minute. And one day my husband told me, babe, they're not calling you because there's nobody else out there. They're calling you because you're good. You're damn good. Like you're the bomb at what you do. So you don't have to settle for terms that don't satisfy you. Hmm. You can push back. If you only travel first class because we only travel first class, then you tell them I only travel first class. I don't want an emergency fund. I don't, I don't oh, want yeah. an emergency fund. Now, do emergencies happen? Yes. Accidents don't make appointments. Things come up. I totally get that. What I'm saving for are opportunities. I'm saving for the opportunity to invest in that next business or, you know, set up my set or do, you know, invest in my book or invest in this. I always, even as we were rebuilding, I would always tell my husband, we need to focus on what we want. We can't focus on what we don't want. Gosh, like, that's so amazing. Like, why am I not doing it? Why can't I do that? And then I just realized I was so damn lazy. Mm -hmm. And if I put in the work to do that, then I could do it. Like, it's, it's literally not got anything to do with them succeeding. It's to do with the fact that I actually am not putting in the work. I see the people putting in the work in different areas and in my own area, and they are, they are making it happen. And I was the type of person who would sit and I would make like charts about all the things I want to do and uh, there'd be pages and pages and pages. And by the time I get to the end, I would have thought about it so much. It's become this huge thing, like a monster in front of me. And I'm like, mm, let's shut this book. Let's not do this. And it was really taking a step back and looking at myself and being like, you're just not doing the work. Like f full stop. You are not doing the work. You're not putting in the effort. And so you're not getting the result. And I think when I saw that about myself, I was like, I can't be upset or angry at, or jealous of these other people that are putting in the work because it's really showing me what it takes to get there. So I really talk a lot about clutter and we say that clutter is the physical manifestation of chaos in your mind. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but if my desk is completely a mess, I can't get things done. Yeah. And you're like, even if I get $100 a week, I'm going to save $2. It's the point that as you make more money, you are in the habit of doing it. Mm -hmm. What people believe is, well, when I make more, then I'll do it. That's not true <laughs> because you are who you are with $100 or with $100,000. You are the same person. So if you are not able to make that connection where you're starting, once you get to wherever you think you're going, you're not all of a sudden going to go, I'm going to be a saver mm -hmm. now. And if, what if? which are the things that we fear. Mm -hmm. So it's the what if. So anytime I'm up against a scenario where I'm feeling anxious or like, you know, mm -hmm. you get those feelings right. Yeah. 
I try to stop, go in my journal and write out what if. So what are all these things that I have going on? And then on the other side of the sheet, I write what is. This is the truth. This is the reality of what's going on. If they don't invite me, the truth is there are other shows, right? Yeah. If they don't like me, the truth is other people do. <laughs> yeah. You know, like if and for every mm -hmm. if that you have, there's always an is that is the truth of this of what's going on. And when I look at the what is, then I get to tell myself a new story. Mm -hmm. We all make up a story anyway. Why not choose one that empowers you instead of one that keeps you crippled in fear? Right. Yeah.